Okay, hello. Once again, we got to call out Spectrum News New York 1 because, again, they are not covering the crime. I mean, what else is there to say about this awful TV station that's just become like News 12 Long Island? I mean, I am just so sick of Spectrum's antics. You know, I am really sick of what they're doing to, you know, not talk about it. You know, I'm sick of it. I really am sick of it. I mean, at least they're covering the storm tomorrow. I'll, I'll give them credit on that. And I'm sorry for stuttering there, but I'm just so annoyed with their antics. At least they talked about the other crime news. Somewhat, this was a crime story. How could you block the FDR drive for a climate protest? I mean, come on, that's a big story. At least to cover that, let's take a look at the public safety and see if we can even find anything about the shooting that happened at Union Square tonight. Because there was a very awful shooting. Okay, well, oh, look at this. 48 seconds. 48 seconds. Are you kidding me? And I will give NJ Burkett from Channel 7 credit tonight. He did a good job covering it during the 6 o'clock newscast tonight. But still, I mean, if you want to know what's somewhat really going on, I mean, you've got to watch 247. Because New York 1 has just become completely useless. You know, I'm so sick of what's going on Spectrum. You know? They're supposed to be covering what's really going on, but they're not. Well, at least they talked about the hit and runs, and I'll put that there. It's been like a whole minute covering that. But let's see if they talked about the shooting that happened in Queens. The awful shooting that happened in Queens over the weekend. No, nothing about it. Nothing about it. So, they have this. We're going to read from AM New York. Because it seems you got to read from Schlepp's Media to get your news. So, here we go. Would-be phone thief shoots man in Union Square. NYPD officers help save life. A man was shot inside the Union Square train station in an apparent botched robbery during the Monday evening rush hour, and some quick-thinking cops helped save the man's life. Cops said the 42-year-old victim was aboard a northbound end train when he was approached by the would-be thief just after 5 p.m. on October 25th. According to Assistant Transit Bureau Chief Vincent Coogan, the victim did not relinquish the phone fast enough, resulting in shots being fired. Chief Coogan said a subway passenger was here on a northbound end train when he was approached by a male who was armed with a black gun. The man with the gun who was standing demanded the cell phone of the man who was seated. The victim received a bullet wound to the left leg and the gunshot itself sent commuters running in a frenzy. That's when two nearby NYPD officers spotted the commotion in the mezzanine area of the northbound platform. Running against the crowd of close to 100 people, Officers Mandeep Singh and Elijah Purdue found the victim bleeding profusely. Officer Purdue said, We saw a male white staggering with a bullet hole to the left side of the leg. My partner gave me his torque in it when we immediately applied it. So, need more. Security, of course. That's the main thing. Alright, the main thing is... The most important detail we have, the wounded man was rushed to Bellevue Hospital and remained in stable condition while the shooter fled the scene and remains at large. So, I did hear from Pix11 that this male victim was in his early 40s. So originally, Channel 7 said it was a 34-year-old male, but, you know, so many conflicting reports, you know, just... Shame on New York 1, they only spent 48 seconds. Let's see how they covered it. Let's watch their story. Let's see how they did it. Oh, lovely. I gotta use my thing here, so... Let's see. Thankfully, it doesn't give me password. It just automatically logs me in. Thankfully, this is my dad's account. So, thankfully, it's automatic. So, I don't have to worry about that. Because since I'm already on Spectrum's network, you know. A man is shot here we go. on the subway train as it approached the Union Square station. 
Police say a 43-year-old man was on a northbound N train just before 5 Monday evening. And they didn't even send the reporter! Are you kidding me? fast enough and was shot in the left leg. Police say the train then pulled into the Union Square station and the suspect got away. A tourniquet had to be applied to the victim, taken to Bellevue Hospital in stable condition. Police were asked if people should be worried about their safety riding the train. 48 seconds. It's not enough time to spend on the story. At least been two minutes. We are down in crime this year. You know, one thing I can say is that way, far way too many guns out there. That's a lie. That's a lie. Shootings have gone up. Robberies have gone up. Violent assaults have gone up. Sexual assaults have gone up. That's a lie. They're hiding it from us. All thanks to this dangerous bail reform law. New York won't going to talk about repealing it? No. No, they won't. No. 48 seconds. Police had a good Samaritan who witnessed the shooting tried chasing down the suspect. Ridiculous. Okay, so New York one saying it's a 42-year-old male victim. But still, they didn't even send the reporter. No reporter was sent to this. It's a major breaking news story. Giles 7, as soon as this spoke tonight, N.J. Burkett was right on the case. This TV station has just really gotten me annoyed. Yeah, we'll get to the climate protests. In this, in this. Wow, I didn't even know about this. Tyler Fairley struck by driver. I think Laura Ould talked about this story. I'm just trying to see if I can find the other um, the other news from Queens. Because there was an awful shooting that happened the other night. Wow, another incident in Queens. See, so much news New York one could be covering, but they don't want to cover it. Let's see if I can find anything about it on Q1S.com. Because Channel 7 did bring it up. Uh, yesterday. So let's see. I'm trying to find the shooting that happened in the Rockaways. There was a very awful shooting that happened on Sunday night, I think it was. I'm trying to find it. Let's see. Okay, I don't see anything about it. Nope. I don't see anything about it. Nope. Check if I can find anything on ABC 7 NY. They may have something. Let's see if I can find it. I'm trying to look for it. Huh. Okay, this is very odd. I don't see anything about it. Let's keep looking, because I, I know I thought I saw something about a shooting in the Rockaways. Let me Google it. Find it. Okay, I don't see anything about it. Let me just Google on the Queens, because I do apologize. I thought I saw something. Yeah, here we go. This is it. Found it. This is a shooting that didn't get covered by New York One. See, I knew I wasn't being paranoid. I knew there was a shooting in Queens over the weekend. All right, here we go. Three people were shot in Queens early Sunday morning, including a man who was hit six times. Gunfire. Ah, oh, stupid ads. Gunfire rang out at 38 01 Beach Town Drive during a dispute in Edgemere around 1 30 in the morning. A 35 year old man was shot once in the chest and was taken to Jamaica Hospital in critical condition. A 32 year old man was shot six times in his left leg, left foot, right foot, groin, right hand, and buttocks and was taken to St. John's Hospital in stable condition. A short time later, a 36 year old victim went to Jamaica Hospital with a gunshot wound to his left ankle. The three men were shot during a dispute at the location. So, this looks like a gas station from what I'm making out. There's no information on what the dispute was over. They're looking for a suspect who fled was wearing 
blue jeans and a light colored sweatshirt and a male suspect they're looking for. So there you go. You know, I, I'm even surprised the Queen's Courier didn't even have anything about this. You have to go to the New York Post. I mean, this is a joke. Very, very disturbing. And then look at this. Police in Jackson Heights searching for a man who opened fire on 90th Street. Read this one. Police from the 115 precinct in Jackson Heights looking for a gunman who opened fire on 90th Street in broad daylight on Thursday, October 14th. At around 4 p.m., the suspect, who was in front of a home at 37-18 90th Street, pulled out a pistol and fired it two times before fleeing on foot. Thankfully, there were no injuries or property damage reported in connection to the shooting. Okay, so we have a video of the suspect. So, suspect was last seen wearing a dark hoodie and dark Adidas sweatpants with white stripes down his legs. And it appears the suspect was also wearing... It appears to be white and blue sneakers. So, there are no arrests, but there you go. There you go. In broad daylight, that's disturbing. That's very disturbing. Yeah, and then there's so much for, uh, so much going on in Jamaica. I mean, we covered this, uh, did I read this recently? Let me see. Right, I read this one. There's another thing that happened in Jamaica. I'm going to read that one. Cops are looking for a group of four muggers that have struck multiple times in Jamaica in October. So, another story that New York one's going to ignore because it's Jamaica. And Jamaica has Latinos and blacks. So, you know New York one's not going to cover it. Let's read this. Okay. So police believe that these, I guess, we'll call them terrorists, because that's what they are, are in their teens or early 20s, surrounded a 48-year-old man as he walked in front of 91-21 173rd Street on Saturday, October 2nd. One of the men wearing a red hoodie pulled out a knife and demanded the victim's money. He was then forced to the ground and his wallet was removed from his pocket as the gang fled eastbound Jamaica Avenue. The stolen wallet contained $360 in cash and multiple credit and debit cards. Then, the gang struck again on Tuesday, October 5th as a 60-year-old man was walking on 171st Street around 8.45 p.m. The men punched him in the head multiple times, knocking him unconscious. The gang made off with the victim's Samsung cell phone and $35 in cash before fleeing northbound on 171st Street. Okay, so they don't even mention what time the first incident happened. Hmm. The second victim was rushed to New York City Health Hospital's Queens with a head injury and was listed in stable condition. Then, on October 7th, a 61-year-old man was at the corner of 90th Street and 168th Street when he was surrounded by four by the four men and punched in the head multiple times. His wallet was removed containing $1,670 in cash and they also took the victim's iPhone 7 before running off. The victim sustained a minor injury to the head but refused medical attention. Then, on Friday, October 8th, a 41-year-old man was getting out of his car at 89-26-168th Street, oh, 168th place, excuse me, when he was surrounded by three of the suspects. One of the men punched him in the head. The others removed $240 in cash, identification, credit, and debit cards, and the victim's TLC license. The victim did not sustain any injuries and refused medical attention. The muggers then again struck on October 12th at the corner of 90th Avenue and 171st Street. An 81-year-old man was walking southbound when he was set up upon the group. One of the suspects punched him in the head, causing him to fall down. The gang proceeded to punch and kick the senior and forcibly remove his wallet before running southbound on 172nd Street towards Jamaica Avenue. The victim sustained injuries to the head and EMS rushed the victim to NYC Health Hospital's clean, stable condition. The victim's wallet contained $740 in cash, debit card identification, and lottery tickets. 
No arrests have obviously been made, so. I mean, look at these thugs. Should be in jail. Should be in Rikers. Not out in the street. But because Karen Kotsowitz said, We need to get rid of the awful hellhole known as Rikers Island. This is her fault! And those people in District 29 are going to elect another Democrat in Kew Gardens. You wait and see. This is what you brought upon, Karen. This is what you brought upon. It's your fault, too. Sorry to call her out, but, you know, this is what we have to deal with in Queens, and not that many people realize that. So what if Rikers is a hellhole? It's a jail! Made for people like these. Alright, so we're gonna read about the tower that was, um... That was killed. Because again, Laura Ool actually posted about this. So much stuff that's being ignored in Queen. You know, this is what we have to talk about. You know, I'm sorry I have to keep doing these videos, but I'm going to keep calling out New York 1 as long as I have to. So next article, a two-year-old girl died Sunday night when she was struck by a driver after wandering away from her mother on a Queen Street in a horrific collision in front of her home. So this happened in Bayside. Again, another story New York 1 ignored. Law enforcement sources said the tragedy occurred at 10.09 p.m. on October 24th in front of a home on 216th Street off 38th Avenue in Bayside. According to law enforcement sources, the, the child's 23-year-old mother brought her daughter, Vienna Rosales, outside a 2021 Nissan Rogue operated by a 23-year-old man and was removing packages from the rear with a toddler wandered to the front side of the SUV. Seconds later, cops said the driver moved the vehicle forward while attempting to leave the location and struck Rosales. The driver stopped his vehicle and remained at the scene. Officers from the 111 precinct responded to a report about the vehicle collision. Found Rosales in the pavement with severe head trauma. EMS rushed the child to Flushing Hospital where she was pronounced dead. Police did not charge the driver with any wrongdoing at this time. So now the collision investigation squad will have to look further. So, very awful story in Bayside, you know. That it's just awful to even think about. Okay, there was one more I wanted to read from the Courier. Let me find it. Yeah, here we go. This one. Motorcycle was killed in collision at Queens Intersection. 51-year-old male motorcyclist died in a collision on a Queen Street back on October 22nd. The incident occurred at 2.43 p.m. on Friday near the corner of 164th Street and 35th Avenue in Flushing. According to law enforcement sources, the victim was operating his motorcycle southbound along 164th Street when he was hit by a driver of a 2004 Toyota Camry a 32-year-old woman heading eastbound along 35th Avenue. The good news is this incident was not ruled as a hit-and-run as the driver of the Toyota Camry stopped their vehicle and remained at the scene following the crash. Officers from the 109 Precinct responded to the call about the collision, found the victim at the location with severe head drama. Police sources said it wasn't immediately known whether he was wearing a helmet at the time of the crash. EMS rushed the victim to Booth Memorial Medical Center where he was pronounced dead. Police have withheld the victim's identity pending family notification. Sources familiar with the investigation said the Camry driver had been cooperative with detectives and no charges have been filed against her at this time. The ongoing inquiry is being conducted by the Collision Investigation Squad. Okay, so... Look at that, a robbery in Brooklyn. I'm trying to find the uh, anything about the hit and runs because I don't want to make this video too long because we have to get to Laura Ool. There were other stuff that happened in Queens. 
Okay, let me just go to the public safety over here. So let me see what this one is. Okay. Three people killed in separate hit and run crashes. So I'll give New York one credit. They at least covered something meaningful. Let's read this. Police say they've arrested a 27-year-old man who believed was involved in a hit-and-run crash late Saturday night that killed a 33-year-old man who was trying to cross the Bruckner Expressway. Wait, why would somebody be crossing the Bruckner Expressway? Oh, look at this. The victim was intoxicated. Oh. It said the body of the victim was found on the westbound side of the highway. Police say they have found an abandoned car on Sunday that they believe was involved in the crash about a mile away from the scene. The driver returned to the vehicle. He was taken into custody. Oh, look at this. Charges were leaving the scene of an accident and driving without a license. Look at this. This is the third incident that was a hit and run in less than 24 hours. Another incident in the Bronx, a man was trying to cross Broadway at West 262nd Street in Riverdale Saturday morning when he was struck by a white Mercedes. And in Brooklyn, Daniel Brown was hit and killed by an SUV while crossing Atlantic Avenue near Nostrand Avenue in the Bedford Divinson section. So, Obviously, this number doesn't surprise me with pedestrian depths going up. Because, again, more people are going out. So, it makes sense. Makes sense. Well, let's go to Lower Ool. Let me see. Trying to find anything in Queens. Just trying to find it here. Oh, look at this. Multiple victims robbed in Glen Oaks. Right by Long Island Jewish. You gotta be kidding me. Police report multiple victims robbed in one vicinity in the stretch of Glen Oaks to New High Park by Long Island Jewish Medical Center. For the month of October, multiple victims were robbed in the vicinity of Union Turnpike, 260th Street to Langdale Street, including 76th Avenue to Langston Avenue in Glen Oaks. According to the 105 precinct, the suspects are being transported to the local hospital for observation after being taken into custody from crime incidents. And of course, thanks to bail reform, they are released back to the streets to find their own way back to their destination. So, there you go. Very unfortunate this is happening right by Long Island Jewish. Very unfortunate. Yeah, we'll get to the protest to wrap this up. So, gun violence. Are we becoming the new Chicago? That is the question that needs to be answered. From this weekend alone, 23 people shot, 11 people stabbed, 5 homicides. Yep. And despite 31,176 people over the weekend who participated in early voting. So. And then de Blasio is focused on Manhattan week. And then he wants to talk about boost shots. Hey, don't from Park Slope. Talk about the crime. You only have two months left. I mean, this is his welcoming message before he goes to retirement. You laugh it up in Park Slope, you idiot. Laugh it up. And your Frank Eric Otzelwitz is going to probably eat dinner with you know, knowing you guys retire in January. Is it that obvious what's going on here?
So I'm trying to find the other protests that happened along the Brooklyn Bridge. You know what, Laura will cover that one. I'll, I'll read from her. Okay, here we go. I'm trying to find it. Alright. Today, 5,000 members of the NYPD, FDNY, SDNY marched from the Brooklyn Bridge to City Hall against the vac vaccine mandate that is scheduled to begin on Friday. So, a lot of madness today. We'll read, um, we'll read the climate protesters because this was a very disturbing one. They blocked the West Side Highway and the FDR Drive. 33 arrests were made. So. This was a group called Extinction Rebellion. So this happened at 8.45 this morning. So a lot of groups were involved. And then look at this. They obviously were the ones who orchestrated it. Extinction Rebellion tweeted, We are interrupting traffic this morning, not to annoy you, but to force the public to confront the true dangers of unchecked climate change. If we do not act today, and if President Joe Biden, a.k.a. the sleepy man from Delaware, doesn't act today, New York City will be underwater by 2100. <laughs> And these people don't realize that they're not going to advocate for congestion pricing. Which, that should be more of the climate protesters' priority right now. You know, they should be more worried about people who are stuck in traffic. According to a video from Freedom News TV, protesters spread out across the northbound lane to the FDR Drive about a half mile south of where Houston Street is in East Village. Some of the protesters put themselves in shackles. So. I mean, what more can't you make up? They obviously did this because they knew that President Biden has a, you know, trip coming up next week. The first week of November, a climate summit. And then there was another protest on the West Side Highway near the Javits Center with a line of demonstrators holding up men are reading, Biden, keep your promise, and chanting, shut it down. While drivers blared their horns. So here's one of the videos. <laughs> Yep. And trust me, I've dealt with the protests before. I've I've been stuck on the QM5 on 57th Street, right by Trump Tower when they were protesting. So trust me, I, I know what it's like. I know what it's like. You know. Very annoying. And there's another video. I'm gonna lower the sound. You can really tell how annoyed these people are. I do apologize for the language, but listen. This is where the F-bomb war originated, so why doesn't this surprise me? Exactly. This woman made a very good point. She even did an interview on camera. And I said, trust me, like, if I was there, I would have said, guys, this is not the right way to be doing this. You know, you can't just block traffic in the middle of rush hour. And I would have told them, can't you guys be advocating for congestion pricing? That's what I literally would have been telling them. Don't call out Biden, call out Hochul. 
No call out the MTA. They're taking way too long with congestion pricing. I'm going to have a separate video of... You want to talk about a real crisis we're dealing with right now? We should be talking about how bad the traffic is getting. Because that's more of a serious situation than worrying about climate. I, I know we have one planet. Okay, the traffic is part of it. I will admit that. But you have to take things very slowly. It starts with solving the problem of dealing with traffic. Because traffic does cause pollution. It does. And, you know, I'll just make one more point. New York 1, again, is in its own little world. They need to have their own little wake-up call. And, you know, as long as Pine Power keeps calling out News 12 Long Island... You know, I'm going to keep doing my job in the city. Because this is our TV station. Inspectum thinks they know what's best for us. No, they don't. No, they do not. So that's it. Thank you for watching.